The final situation we have to consider is where again we don't care about the ordering but that we are sampling with replacement. So this is something akin to the exercise we do with the die um, where we can just roll the die and we get the same uh, number of possibilities each time. So if we think just to that die possibility there are in fact six outcomes possible for each die and what we're saying is we're then going to roll these die and we can get any of these possibilities in any order. So we could get a 1 followed by a 5 and we could actually get a 1 again but this time we want to count the possibilities where we don't care about the ordering. Maybe we got the 5 first and then the 1s. Maybe we got a 1 and then a 5 and then a 1. And the simplest way of thinking about this is to actually use a little trick where we divide. Think about dividing the space into bins. And what we essentially have now is a set of a marker and a marker and a boundary and a boundary and a boundary and a boundary and a marker and then another boundary. And we don't care about the end boundaries. And what we want to think about are the number of ways we can rearrange this, bearing in mind each of these is in some sense unique. So of course what we have here are the n, the six possible ways um, that we could roll a die, plus the three ways, the three die that we are going to roll, less one, because we're actually not going to consider all n of the die anymore, we're going to consider the walls. And this gives us some sense of the scale of the problem, but this reduces simply to the previous one, in which case we need to find this factorial divided by the number of ways in which we could roll a 1, a 1 and a 5, or the 3 die, and of course we need to divide out the factorial as above. And this gives us an expression for enumerating when we're sampling an unordered way with replacement.